fellow poetry lovers and poetry curious. So the next book that I'm going to be reading selections from is A Book of Luminous Things, an international anthology of poetry by, and I am not going to say his name correctly, Szesla Milos. Would be Chess, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to try to say it. I can't, I'm not sure if it's, I think he's from Lithuania, maybe, but I don't know if that's Polish. I don't know, but I will tell you this. He edited, okay, it's highly respected poet right here. Highly respected poet. Um, internationally respected poet. And but he, he edited this book when he was 80 years old. And it's one of those books where it's like he is choosing the poems and poets that he wants to shine a light on as he exits. So it's, it should be subtitled Chesla Milos, as a matter of fact, maybe it should, this should even be <laughs> changed to the favorite poems of Chesla Milos. And then you could say an international anthology. Um, or you could have called it Without Boundaries, the favorite poetry of Czesław Milos. Um, but it just becomes very clear that he is he's favoring Polish poets among the internationals, but there are international poets here, but he's favoring those. Um, this uh, is criticized frequently as having too many uh, Asian poets, Chinese poets in particular. But I did a count. I did a count. So um, the total number, let me see. Where's my, it says the total count is below. See total below, oh, English. Um, so Chinese uh, poet, poets was 50, but English poets was 93. Uh, and of those English poems, um, there was a preponderance of California poets. And I put here there was only British and Irish tokenism. In other words, there were a couple thrown in. Um, so mainly American, uh, with an unusual percentage of California poets among the English poems. Chinese, 50. Polish, 38. French, 16. And the rest are just smatterings. Three Japanese, one Portuguese, Spanish, three Hebrew, Four, Norwegian, four, Estonia, two, Russian, one, Swedish, uh, four, Hungarian, two. And this is the number of poems, not the number of poets. Like, um, I can't remember, is Tranströmer, is, is he Swedish? That might have been all of the Swedish, may have all been his. But anyway, um, Hungarian, two, Greek, two, German, one, Inuit, one, Persian, two, Yoruba, one, Bushman of South Africa, one, Armenian, one. So that's how it's international. Definitely uh, in the internationalness of it, there is a predom uh, pre predominance of Chinese and Polish. But it is international. I mean, it's, he's not sticking to one country. That was not clearly part of his program. But that's why I say it's pretty much his favorite poems. Clearly, he loved and appreciated and resonated with Chinese poetry. And I was going to do the time periods. You know, there's more than one by Whitman in here. And let's see, 700s to the 1200s 
is the Chinese poetry, so old Chinese poetry. Um, there were a few poets uh, from the late 1800s, mostly Whitman, and the rest were from the 20th century. So it's largely 20th century poetry, with the exception of those 50 Chinese translations. And I had it as a total of 231 poems. I'm never sure if I count correctly, but I'm not sure that I saw it anyplace else. So that gives you some idea of the scope of this. It was published, oh, 1996. So, yep, late 1990s. Lots of familiar names in here. I just saw Mary Oliver, um, and, and a number that I don't know, and they frequently are from um, either other countries or some Polish poets um, that I didn't recognize. Um, well, there's a lot from other countries that I didn't recognize. Most from the U.S. that I didn't recognize were um, California. So, in other words, people that may be well published but haven't made it into the bigger anthologies that attempt to preserve and present, you know, the poetry that should, that they believe should endure. And he's saying, well, hey, you've overlooked these, and I think they should endure. <laughs> as well as, um, like I said, a bunch from different languages that he has included. So, I would not call this because it is, it lacks objectivity, right? You have to go into this knowing that it lacks objectivity. And c can it be an interesting read, even though it lacks objectivity? Sure. I'm going to read uh, several poems to you, like, like 20 or something different poems um, from this volume. Some are the translations, some are U.S. poets, and I had never read to you a poem, this particular poem by them, or whatever. But I would say that this is not a good international anthology overall, because it does skew in a certain direction, and it's, I don't think he provides, he provides, oh, is this the one where, okay, he provides an introduction, but it's a personal introduction. And he does a really weird thing in here <laughs> where he, it's for, okay, so when I say personal introduction, so sometimes he says why he knows or likes this poet. Other times he does this thing that I find, you know, so the, the memorabilia aspect in terms of, or memoir, I guess I should say, memoir aspect of it is mildly interesting. But the other thing that he does is like he explains the poem before you've read the, po the poem. If you're going to actually explain the poem, then let the person read it first and explain it later. Put that at the end. So that really bugged me and I essentially ended up not reading this. The introductions to me had <clears throat> close to no value. So I just read the poems. Um, I guess he does this, there's some introduction to a section. I'll read you the sections. So he has sections. Epiphany, and I actually liked all of the poems in that. Um, nature, the secret of a thing, so it's subject matter sections. Travel, places, which is interesting. I don't see why travel and places couldn't have just been kind of meshed together. The moment, and <clears throat> people among people, and then there's this section, which is so weird. It's called women's, or woman's, woman's skin. Oh my god. Um, and it's supposed to be women writing about women, but there's a bunch of men in here too, so it's a weird... Very weird section. 
um, situations, non-attachment, and history. And that history is focused on World War II. So he could have just kept it World War II, but he does have a an earlier Chinese poet, which so I guess he needs to broaden it there. Um, let me see. What, what notes did I put up here? It says he's holding a Christian lens. That kind of surprised me. It was interesting. I don't usually see that. It was, he's holding a Christian lens up to the things that may have nothing to do with it. So that's another one of the things in his intros. He seems to be wanting to talk about potential Christian influence in a poem. Uh, and I guess I was questioning whether or not it was really relevant. Um, yep. Okay. So what was the other thing? I, it was really interesting to me the intent of this, which he states here in the introduction. And I, I don't feel like he um, accomplishes that. So in the intent, it's almost like he's creating this for, like, almost for teachers to use. But let me see if it says, Many poems that I like or admire are not in this anthology because they do not correspond to my criteria of size and accessibility to the reader. So I guess I have to reframe my favorites of Szesla Milos and just say short accessible favorites by Szesla Milos. I don't know. Um, I leave to others the exploration of the whole territory of poetry in its rich, richness and variety. I instead carve it from a province of my own. My proposition consists in presenting poems, whether contemporary or a thousand years old, that are with few exceptions, short, clear, readable, and to use a, com a compromised term, realist, that is loyal toward reality and attempting to describe it as concisely as possible. So, I don't know. Um, fairly short, but certainly not all short poems or even descriptive poems are easy. Um, I don't know, especially when he includes, like I would even argue when we were in the table of contents, I was noticing under history, they have Kavafis waiting for the barbarians. And I don't think of Waiting for the Barbarians as realist. I think of it as pointing to a human tendency and kind of exaggerating it. Um, or just really pointing to a human tendency. And I don't know. But anyway. So, again, it doesn't hurt to read this, but I wouldn't recommend it as, like, your first book. Well, I don't, I don't even care if it's your first book of international poetry, but it's, it's not going to give you an appropriate scope, and it's not going to give you appropriate introductions for a book of international poetry. I definitely would not. Like I said, this whole idea of accessibility and brevity to me is when somebody wants to use something for a class, like an introductory class in poetry, I would not use this as an introduction to poetry. I would not use any um, book of translations as an introduction. Maybe I would use it as an introduction to... Um, poetry in trans... Well, I wouldn't even use it for that because so many, you know, 93 of the poems are in English. So it's, it's an odd duck. Let's, I'll just say that. This book is an odd duck. Doesn't hurt to read it. 
but I don't feel like it quite accomplishes I feel like this is not accurate, even though there's other nations, other languages in here. I don't feel like this is quite accurate, and I'm not sure that it functions in the way he intended. Maybe if he was the teacher, maybe he can use it. I assume that these are poems that he has used. But his introductions are not at all teacherly to me. Even telling somebody what the poem about is about, to me, is not teacherly. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't point out the virtues of the poem, how it achieved what it achieved. I don't know. But there are some poems I enjoy in here, across the spectrum. Some of them in English that I either hadn't read before or hadn't read to you before. And uh, there's this guy, I can't remember if Rolf is from Norway or Sweden or Finland. And um, good old Transtromer. But, you know, there's a Whitman in here I'm going to read to you. Just because I haven't read it to you before and it's in here. And there are some others. Wayne Dodd, I didn't know who Wayne Dodd was. Yeah, and there, was there a Polish? No, there's Swisla Zimborska. Everybody, I can't say everybody knows her, <laughs> but anyway, um, but she's very, very famous, Polish poet. So there you go. Can't say, well, limited recommendation in terms of this book, but I will be reading some poems to you from it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.